Well, joining us now is our uh, correspondent, Sarah Kamanya, who joins us all the way from Kenya. Sarah, firstly confirm to us, Tillerson's program has been cancelled. What happens now? Is he still in Kenya? Well, he's still in Nairobi. We are waiting to uh, see if he will attend to tomorrow's program, where he is supposed to go to the Kenya Wildlife Services Forensic Lab. This is where uh, the wildlife experts take are samples from poached animals in order to understand how they met their deaths and uh, uh, what kind of uh, equipment was used to kill them or what kind of chemicals was used to kill them, which was quite important for the U.S. to understand because we understand the U.S. is about to lift uh, the ban on the trade in ivory and uh, in some parts of the country, and Kenya has protested that decision. So it was going to be very important that Tillerson uh, attends that uh, event tomorrow. Is there any significance, though, that um, there is no commemoration that's happening around this 20-year 20, 20, 20, 20 anniversary of um, the bombing? Yes, a lot of people are concerned because there are people who still claim that they were never compensated uh, following the death of their loved ones or following injuries that they sustained uh, during the August 8th bombings in both the Salaam and Nairobi uh, bombing attacks. But there's also a feeling that uh, it was a time that the U.S. would have say that they are indeed committed to the fight against terrorism in Kenya and also supporting the region in its fight against the Al-Shabaab militant group, which the whole region have actually been battling either inside Somalia or in their country. Sarah, tell me, has there been any reaction to Tillerson's remarks that um, African states should guard against what he calls, quote-unquote, um, Chinese dollars? Of course, um, the loans that the Chinese have been giving all the African states. Um, what's the reaction from Kenya? Well, in Kenya, it's mixed reactions, especially because uh, the country two days ago said uh, that it was broke following over-borrowing, especially to pay salaries in the public service, but also because the country has had uh, to take a lot of loans from China to do its infrastructure, whether it is a uh, road, whether it is a railway line now called the Senate Gauge Railway Line. And so this was a time for Kenyans to just laugh at their problems if you look at what is going on on social media. But for some of them, they took it very seriously and said that uh, the U.S. should not be the people to say, look at yourselves, because they say uh, the book... Uh, institutions. If you look at uh, the World Bank and the IMF, they have their loans tied to a lot of conditionalities. And so they're saying the book with institution are not the ones that should be uh, telling us, look at China or look at uh, how, who you're borrowing from. But a lot of people also say maybe it's time people looked inward and saw what they can do in terms of the heavy borrowing that has been happening inside Kenya. Yeah, because if you listen to the criticism from Tillerson and you look back at during Obama's tenure, this has been the same issue that has come over and over again. Is it really a quest of um, these African states selling over their sovereignty to uh, the Chinese? Well, uh, we spoke to one economist off the record and he was saying that uh, the U.S. may be threatened because of the influence that uh, China has had, especially in the East African region where you find, if it is the African Union headquarters in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, it is fully financed by uh, the Chinese government. If you look at uh, the railway line uh, in Ethiopia, financed by the Chinese government. If you look at the roads in Kenya, financed by Ethiopia. If you look at the ports, both in Tanzania and in Kenya, all of them financed by uh, China. But what they're saying is uh, the difference between getting a loan from China and getting a loan from the U.S. is that the loans from China do, do not come with conditionalities, uh, no issues of human rights, uh, which would ideally in a country like Ethiopia, which is going through very serious political upheavals right now, matter if the loan is coming from the IMF or coming from the World Bank. And so the U.S., that is the U.S.'s concern. But when you speak to uh, governments like Kenya, President Uhuru Kenyatta will tell you that um, the economy of a country depends very much on infrastructure, and so they are willing to do anything to get loans from China to spur economic growth, which they believe at this point will depend on infrastructure development, which for now depends on the loans that come from China.
Sarah, just very quickly, um, another development in Kenya, President Uhuru Kenyatta as well as Raila Odinga smoking the peace pipe, but NASA is saying, hold on, we were not consulted. Indeed, uh, three of the political parties aligned to the National Super Alliance, that is NASA, uh, Raila Odinga's party saying they were not involved, and so they say this is a pact between two people. And it cannot be called dialogue. Instead, they're saying this is just uh, uh, two people sitting down together and talking. They say it will take a long time before the country can heal. And they say Raila Odinga and Uhuru Kenyatta are not enough to sit down and heal the country. Well, we have to wait and see how that plays out, considering what NASA is saying, that they were not consulted. Sarah Kamani joining us all the way from Nairobi in Kenya.